Hey, what's up? It's Paul. How you doing? Well, usually I produce records with all the gear you see behind me. And today I'm going to do an experiment. I'm going to try just using one synthesizer to make a whole entire track. Well, it's a very unique synthesizer. It's my oldest piece of gear that I still have. I've sold out all my stuff from the 70s, but I've kept this one piece from 1983 that I bought new and it is my left hand and my right hand. So I gave myself some ground rules. First, it was going to be only this synth going into my digital mixer. And I'm going to use one effect in the digital mixer. It's going to be a delay or some kind of time-based effect. And it's going directly into my Neve interface and directly into Pro Tools. I will use no processing in Pro Tools at all in this entire recording or mix. And I'll just keep overdubbing tracks until I see what I like. The other ground rule I have is I'm not going to use any presets that I've say. Everything I'm going to do, I'm going to dial in the sound. So the first thing I do is I'm going to start with just a single oscillator one. A Jupiter 8 has two oscillators that can be synced or it can be cross-modulated with white noise. So I'm going to start with just oscillator one and I'm going to put it in the unison mode. So now I have all 16 voices or eight voices times two oscillators stacked under one note. And if I play multiple notes, it'll divide it down. So if I hit that note right there, you hear that. And if I put it in mono mode or in poly mode, it sounds like that, which is a fat bass. But if you go multiples, right? So now I can do something called cross modulation and I have oscillator two set on white noise. So I cross modulate oscillator one into oscillator two and it would come up with percussion percussion effects all right let's turn it back on so i'm going to start with adding a delay over here and i have my delay set up to 120 milliseconds so let me hit record over here in pro tools and i'll just record a little bit of audio the other rule i have up is i don't have any idea what kind of song I'm going to make. I'm just going to play it by ear and see what comes up. So I've decided this piece needs an introduction. So I'm going to use the classic dual soft tooth waves out of the Jupiter 8. And I'm going to control the cutoff frequency with a pedal. And I have a very slow LFO going on that's being modulated, modulating the VCA, a little bit on the VCF, the filter. And then also when I hit the VCO LFO modulation button over here, it does a pitch bend. So with the very percussive part going on, the main part of the song, I decided that can't handle drums right now. So I'm going to put on a very simple melody. So I dialed in the first oscillator is a, uh, is a sine wave. And then I tuned up the second oscillator, two octaves, and made it into a pulse width wave. And that pulse width is being... Um, going through envelope one, and envelope one is set in a reverse mode. This little switch right here says it in reverse. So it does reverse, and the sustain portion of that ADSR is now where the filter cuts off. So listen to the two sounds together. And you hear a 
as I hold, it grows down to the sustain level because it's in reverse mode. Now, of course, I have to cap this off with a little delay to give it some ambience. And I don't do that in post-production because this is, this is everything is done live here. <laughs> So let's record that. So I've decided this piece needs some percussion after all. So I took a white noise that filters down and then reverse envelope one filters back up again. So even if I do it fast, it still does a little, little pop at the end. Now, of course, holding with my delay idea, I added a quarter note delay. An eighth note delay, actually. So that click track is driving me crazy. So instead of replacing it with a hi-hat or some kind of high-end percussion, I'm going to replace it with a bass slash kick sound. Now, I like this sound here. It's a bass made with a um, sine wave. And I also found a progression that I like. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of high harmonic two octaves up with a uh, another sine wave. So I'm going to add that in there, and then I'm going to add a progression to make it go happy with it. So now that I've got the bass line down, holding down a solid rhythm, now I can tone back or actually mute now that fast arpeggiator line that's really crazy. Now I'm going to enter a, instead of doing a string pad, I'm going to do almost like a cello line. I pulled up a couple of pulse width waves, kind of enter real slowly. And I'm going to play that line as an, as a single note, and then I could add another note to make it a chord. Let's try that. So now I found the second line, and it's, I'm using a very similar sound. I just changed the filter slightly. But something else I'm doing, I keep switching back and forth between the Neve preamp and the digital preamp and, and going back and forth. So some get some more dirty sound. So this is going into the Neve. The last pad note was going into the digital. So you know, slightly different sound. So I'm going to go up a, a sixth and do a little more prettier line up there. We'll see. So what have I learned? Well, it's definitely possible to do a, a track with only a 1983 synthesizer and not make it sound like it's from the early 80s. Um, it was a lot of fun doing this, and I found that I had to, since it was all improvised, improvised, I didn't know which way I was going, started with a really techno feeling, ended up making that really band limited. Uh, that was the secret to making that sequence, that fast, crazy, chaotic sequence work. I removed everything up to 500 hertz and everything above 2.5K and made it really strict with a harsh um, curve on the... Uh, the EQ. That was the way to make that fit in the track. And then uh, everything else went pretty much un-EQ'd, unadulterated in any way. It was what I played. I didn't use any kind of uh, time correction. Everything was played as I, as I played it down. And uh, so it was a lot of fun doing that, not just recording straight into Pro Tools. Ended up with seven tracks and, uh, and it was a lot of fun. So hopefully you enjoy it. Here's the one minute song as it ended up.